It was just the Olympics. It was just the Olympics. We yes. didn't do too good. No. We won it hot. Women, what, was it women's hockey? Uh, yeah, women's I, hockey won. That was a Got big the gold. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Men's curling. We won uh, curling. Yeah. The women's figure skaters just like fell apart. That's the only thing I usually give a fuck about is I like the figure skating. I. And the women's figure skaters, unfortunately, just like fell apart. America won curling. We did. And we beat hockey and Canada is like not happy about it. Like they were almost impolite in the <sighs> breakfast line. Oh, for, for fuck's sake, Canada, you don't have to deal with the orange asshole. Let us know, have we this. Need, we need this one. Let us just let us. You You have a wonderful country. And we don't. Let us have this. I mean, your prime minister went in a little too hard on his trip to India. A little bit, yeah, but... Like, he bought himself a whole Bollywood wardrobe, and he's really white, so he kind of he kind of went a little too hard. But, you know, I think his heart's in the right place. So we, he's we, just kind of that white guy. However, we do, because of course we do, have an Olympic story this week, and let's get the intro going. Of <laughs> Stop trying to get your cat to make a noise. I know. Now she's just looking at me like, no, fuck you. <sighs> anyway. I'll come up there. Each week, Catherine... Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide interweb, find all sorts of warm stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And do you remember the last Olympics where they had like open manholes and the the, yeah, uh, the and wolves running around the fucking residences and brown stuff coming out of the taps and whatnot? If you had a bathroom, if you did, yeah, it. it, it well, it didn't get that bad on that side. In fact, by all accounts, things were much more, you know. Yeah, it sounds like uh, South Korea. Except things pretty well for one dude who just the, in the opening ceremony when the Americans marched out, they played Gangnam Style. Well, that was kind of sad. This was kind of worse. Yeah, this guy. Apparently he's world famous. Streaker captures world attention by crashing the ice, the Olympics, in a tutu. Um, the invader arrived on the ice after the men's 1,000 meter speed skating event. Yeah, he didn't even do this at the figure skating. No. Stop it, stop it, stop um, it. Inked on his chest were the words, peace and love. So while he, wait, at least he waited until the event was over. Um, the man was quickly identified as Mark Roberts, a UK-based man with a uh, plan who has pulled stunts like this more than 500 events, including, uh, including the uh, right after the controversial Super Bowl halftime show that starred Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Here, he left out the best part of his outfit. What? Yes. No, no, no. We're getting to it. He had a tutu. There he is. Uh... Naked, yeah, he's got the peace and love. And, of course, the monkey face dick pouch. Gotta have it. The the monkey face... I, it's, I gotta get a bigger picture of this for everybody. There we go. There's... I don't know how familiar you guys are with dick pouches. But most of the time in a Hollywood movie, I know this was the case with Fifty Shades of Grey because Jamie Dornan complained about it a lot. If a dude is doing a nude scene or a sex scene where he is nude, they have a little pouch. Kind of, it kind of resembles a D and D dice bag that they put their dick and balls in, in, so that he's not actually grinding his dick on the actress. This is a product, and apparently, you can get one that looks like a monkey. He's done this. Haven't you always wanted a monkey. He's done this five, This is a, over 500 times. This is a fucking this, career. Yeah, this is like his thing. I mean, if you know, when, when you were like two, 
and you would yank off your diaper and run around the fucking house and your parents had to fucking chase you. I don't think I was that kid, but I babysitted that kid. The kids do that shit. And you're like, and you're like, you have to stop doing that. Well, apparently when you grow up, you really don't. Yeah. There's. I babysat that kid. I think he is still that kid. (laughs) Shut up. I have to remind him that we have large windows. We should just get you a tutu and a monkey dick pouch. Yeah, that is not a thing that's happening. Or, or black or is that curtains. minion pouch you sent me today at work? <laughs> just I get sent him a, a crocheted minion dick pouch. Just, just get the blackout curtains, Dan. <laughs> that's what I Why did. Why does have black lipstick? Cause, cause they make it. So yeah, that that's. That's that's the UK. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, the majesty, the pomp and circumstance of the Olympic Games. Now well, let's now this next story. Tara knows exactly what I'm about to talk about here on this next one. So, for those of you who don't know your um your drug war history, um. In the 20th century, one of the most notorious drug lords on the planet was a man named Pablo Escobar. And if you are familiar with Netflix's Narcos, you know a good deal about him. Um, But something that Narcos tends to leave out is that he was nuttier than a fucking fruitcake. He, he, Pablo Escobar was the Donald Trump of drug lords. Kind of. This is a man who would only go to jail if he could build and manage the jail himself. <laughs> and the government allowed him to. Really? Did they? I didn't yeah. Know yeah. He that's, built his own jail. That's ridiculous. And then kept selling cocaine from that jail. He kept running. And, and yeah, it was it was a whole thing. But another thing Pablo Escobar did, because nuttier than a fucking fruitcake was he had a zoo. He had his own private zoo at his compound in Colombia. Now, Pablo Escobar has been dead for decades. Yeah. He was famously killed in a shootout with uh, DEA agents and, and, uh, and uh, Colombia uh, police forces. But his legacy lives on in Pratt just one of the fucking craziest god... No, I can't put it on there. Colombia declares war on Pablo Escobar's hippos. A herd of wild hippos. It's another Buddhism legacy the convicted criminal has left for his country. Um, the lo- so you seem surprised about this today, and I know I have mentioned this on the show before. It's I just, have told you about this. I didn't and expect that, like, it to hit a headline, though. And, like, they're fucking thriving, and it's a problem. Because they have, like, in Africa, their natural predators are... I forget if it's alligators or crocodiles, to be honest with you. But, you know, death lizards. They they don't have any natural predators in Colombia, so they're yeah. fucking thriving. And it's a fucking problem. Originally, Pablo Escobar had four hippos... Now there are 40 hippos. They have multiplied by 10. In, in, in the course of, of two decades, there are now 40 goddamn hippos. Oh, I'm a happy hippo. It's been a while, old friend. <laughs> so there, so there, and the pro, the other problem runs in is they're completely feral now. Yeah. So you can't just wild. you can't just round them up and take them to a zoo because number one, they'll kill you. Yeah, they will. And number two, they'll kill you. Yeah. Be- they kill the shit out of everything. I know everybody's seen all those videos. This is like a Jurassic Park level problem. I, I, and I know that sounds insane, 
but it is. I, I know everybody just... Hippos are fucking death tanks. Yeah, you've been seeing pictures of Fiona the hippo, and she's adorable, and it's yeah. wonderful, and yeah, Fiona's been around human beings her entire life. Yes. Hippos in the wild. Have you seen that gif of the hippo just walking along while three lions are trying to fucking eat it? It's just not giving a shit. And it doesn't give a fuck. Because their hide is so fucking thick, you can't bite through it. And they, they, and they have a four foot jaw that can crush a watermelon with no effort. Just yep. completely splatter it to nothing. They um, lick by you. They, and, and they they each weigh about one to three tons. They don't belong in Colombia. They are completely out of place in the ecosystem. They do whatever the fuck they want. They kill people. And you can't just round them up and move them back. Yeah, because, like, what's your plan? Yeah, they're three tons each. They each weigh the size of a car. A living, pooping murder car. <laughs> like, they're death tanks. They're murder tanks that secrete red sunscreen. They, yeah. They sweat blood. Like, And so the, the Colombian government is, they, they can't do anything about this. Yeah, they're kind of just stuck with it. Like, if they wanted... They really should have handled it when it was for domesticated hippos, because at that point in time, you could have rounded them up and moved them with back. With the proper equipment and people, move them to a zoo. Now, like they escaped the compound, they settled on a river, they they reproduce tenfold, and y'all are fucked. We we wanted to raise the possibility of sterilizing them, but it's very expensive. We did it with one individual, and it cost us 28,000 euros. Ugh. And again, you have to catch them to do that. And trying and to... if you get anywhere near a pot of hippos, they will fuck you up. This was the animal, I remind you again, that Steve Irwin wouldn't fuck with. He was rowing on down a river, and a hippo turned from the pod and swam towards him, and he took the fuck off. Been doing this almost 20 years. Yeah, and they really should have dealt with it before now, because now they're pretty much fucked. If you told me 20 years ago, before doing RDA, that I'd have to contend with a hippo... A story, a headline about hippos trying to conquer Colombia. I I would have probably rethought this entire fucking thing. They're colonizing that motherfucker. I, Jesus. And the thing is, give it another 20 years, they're going to move past Colombia. Yeah, because uh, why? The, why? Like, eventually, this will be a South America problem. The world is too goddamn weird. And global warming's not really going to take them out because they're made for heat and water. And death. Right. So, like, even if it gets really hot and floods South America, they're going to be fine. All because one goddamn fucking drug lord wanted to have a fucking personal zoo. This is why I respect... The noble and majestic hippo because someday they will rule this planet <sighs> let's go from hippos to skunks and stupid people um, oh okay you know that old saying uh the right tool for the job yes which is almost never a flamethrower shut up <sighs> that's that's a thing you, you're 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 supposed to you, you're supposed to you're supposed to do things a certain way, like pest control. Never a flamethrower. Or smoke bombs. Man using a smoke bombs to stare, scare off skunks burns down Detroit area home. Fire chief oh. says no skunk carcasses were found. So it didn't even work. Authorities say a man destroyed, destroyed a suburban Detroit home while trying to use a smoke bomb to rid a crawl space of skunks. 
The Detroit Free Press reports the man's attempt sparked a fire Monday that quickly spread from the crawl space to the first floor. Fire eventually spread through the walls in the attic of the rental property. You're not getting your deposit back. The first thing you do is if you're you're renting and your domicile your domicile has some sort of pest infestation call the person who owns the place right don't, don't let them deal with that shit don't just take fucking smoke bot this will work this this it fucking there we go problem solved there, no. there are people who this is their whole job yes Yes. That's what they do. There's a guy who is trained to evacuate skunks. Like, think about what a smelly, thankless job that is. And then think about the fact that he didn't even get that day's pay because you decided to do it your fucking self. And, and even more... He and... owns stock in tomato juice. <laughs> and even more, look on his truck. Does he have smoke bombs? No! You know why? That's not the right fucking thing to use! Like, I don't know what you do use to trap and relocate the skunks. You use a trap! Right, but, like, I don't know what you put in it. I don't know, you know. You just put, like, berries and shit. But there's ways to do it that don't involve burning down your house. Because I hate to tell you, the skunks have won. You know, when, when I, one of the big reasons I, 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 I thought about at some point renting this place out. This is my dad's old house. It's, you know, I thought about. And then you realized people like this exist. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> you know what? I'll just rent the place and I'll move somewhere else. And then I, then, then I realized, no, 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 no. Because then I'll have some asshole who sees a fucking raccoon mm -hmm. and pulls out a can of paint and a lighter. Or God forbid, finds the freezer uh, before you. Summons I, Cthulhu. So yeah, re yeah, renting is. Um, this is why renters, renters are the devil. Yeah. Because most people, they're just fine. They live in the place. They pay their rent. They don't fuck anything up. And then you have this asshole. Ugh. And the thing is about skunks, like, if you don't bother them. Like, they're not just going to spray for no reason. No, they spray if they're threatened. That's a defense mechanism. That's, right. That's Unless not... they're threatened, they're not going to do it. They're not just... You just leave them the fuck alone. They're, they're not just... leave you the fuck alone. Skunks don't just squirt that shit all around for no. fun. I imagine they don't like how it smells either. Oh, next up, some more airline fun. Oh, okay. boy. I feel like we don't get a week without airplane bullshit anymore. We don't. I, I Flying is a really stressful thing for me. Especially because there's always that, having done it so much, there's always that knowledge in the back of my head that I'm not going to make a connection because mm -hmm. of something I can do nothing the fuck about. Right. So I kind of get the anxiety involved in this story, except this guy is not just anxious, he's an idiot. Panicked United passenger pops chute, uses <gasps> emergency exit inflatable slide to get off plane at Newark Airport. Fucking Newark. It's always fucking Newark. Oh, but it's it's. That's why we fly out of Philly. Because New York is full of savages. United Airlines flight from New Jersey to Tampa was unable to take off on time Sunday evening after a passenger escaped the plane by opening the emergency exit door and jumping off using the slide. Uh, United Airlines flight 1640 was parked at the gate at Newark Liberty International Airport when the passenger popped the chute and slid down. Uh, when officers got to the scene, the panicked passenger was yelling that he didn't belong on the plane because it was the wrong flight. Despite the claim he was on the wrong flight, Port Authority said he was ticketed to be on the plane to Tampa. So, 
Somehow he got on the plane with the ticket that said what the flight was, where it was going to, and when, because your ticket says that. It even does. If, even if it's on your fucking cell phone, it says it, that. It tells you that, yeah. Got on the plane, sat down. For some reason, it occurred to him he was on the wrong one. Like the creature on the wing told him, you're on the wrong plane. And apparently he started yelling at everyone saying, I'm on the wrong flight. What could this, the stewardesses come by, they look at his ticket. No, that's this flight. Mm -hmm. And his response after that was, instead of having the stewardess, the ticket itself, everyone confirm to him, this is the flight you're supposed to be on. He decided, no, I'm right, and pop the fucking emergency slide. And fuck over everybody. Yeah. Yeah, because that that's when that's when if you pull shit like that, as they take you off to jail, they should just line up all the other passengers, passengers from the plane on either side, as they just take you through a gauntlet. As you're going out of all those motherfuckers who are yeah. going to miss their flights, who are not. It's not like they just push a button and like in comic books that just sucks back up into the plane and then they take off. Nope. That's going to take hours to fix. That shit's expensive, too. It's it's kind right. of like a one use. Th at least I'm, I'm understanding this properly. Maybe YouTube will disagree. I won't care. But as I understand this properly, it's kind of like an airbag. You know? If kind of, I think. If your car airbag pops out, they can't just deflate that and no, fold it back up. No, you have to get a new airbag. Because there's like explosive bolts and shit involved. Yeah. It's like a, a unit they have to play. It's like a cartridge, you know? So, I had to get mine replaced because it was recalled because they were like, oh yeah, there was a problem with this airbag and it could, you know explode on your face i think i have that recall too and i just haven't gotten around to it if you value having a face like i got the letter and i was like eh, and then i had to get my car repaired and they were like okay so you're due for this recall do you understand how vital this is and i'm like well the airbag might not work they're like no it's not that it might not work it might explode on your face and I'm like, okay, well, please fix that then, because I like having a face. It's very useful. Yeah. It's where the food goes. Right. Um, I just, oh, you ass. All right. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah, this guy sucks. This lady sucks worse. And you know why I hate, I, I really hate this lady, because you know why? Because this worked is why I hate her. I hate her because this fucking worked. Woman tries to steal camera, hurls feces in escape. Why do they do this? Indianapolis. Please say a woman trying to steal a video camera from an Indianapolis store escaped after throwing feces at a security worker. I mean, that would work if it was me too, because... I guarantee you that security worker is not paid enough to deal with that. Indianapolis police responded Tuesday to a Menards on the city's east side, and a loss prevention officer told them he saw the shoplifting suspect remove the camera from its pass packaging and place it into a bag. The officer told police that when he tried to stop the woman from leaving, she reached into her pants, pulled out a handful of feces, and threw it at him. He says the feces hit him in the chest. Just keep that shit loaded. <laughs> like, like your plan involves shitting yourself. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> well, Who police, wins here? Police say the woman ran out the door and escaped. Police say the camera is recovered. They're trying to identify the woman. Okay, so it didn't entirely work. She didn't get to keep the camera. Like, but who benefits? Because now... You have shit your pants, and you have a shit-covered hand. And you're wanted. I mean, it's... And you're a grown person who shit your pants. You shit... In public. 
that's and throw it at somebody like that, a monkey in the zoo. That's kind of just to be able to shit on command. Just be like as a net. That's like you know, octopuses squirting ink as a natural offense. Except in this case, it's pooping yourself. And that's a biohazard. That's. That takes practice. You know? Or Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, yeah, but still, I just... <sighs> All of the options there. She could have tried to talk her way out of it. She could have you know, She could have cried. That's one you can pull off. She could have just shoved him. She could have shoved him? She could have just been like, get the fuck off. She could have been... Oh, uh, here's another nasty one. She could have screamed, help assault, or something like that. Which would it that that'll startle somebody that'll make them back up, even if you know any yeah. other option, but no, 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 no. She went with the oldest of primate responses. And what makes me sad is this isn't even like the third time we've no. done a story like this, no. it's not even the fifth time we've this? done a story like this. No. Like, this is a fucking perennial. <laughs> And it just makes me mad. <laughs> it's not fucking acceptable. Just. <sighs> yeah, I love this. Flutter Nutter in the channel saying, we are now stating ways she could have stopped the police. That's how bad this story is. Ugh. Okay, Lionheart said it's a perennial. <laughs> I mean, god damn it. Beyond the fact that it's fucking disgusting thing to do, it's legit a biohazard. Oh, yeah. Like, that's unfucking safe to do to somebody. Am I nachos? Shoplift in one hand, shit in the other. See which one fills up faster. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think unless it's like a mutually agreed upon poop situation that <laughs> anybody in the world besides a nurse should have to see your poop. Oh god. Beyond beyond the point when you're out of diapers. <laughs> I don't think anybody but a medical professional who has specifically requested it should ever have to see your poop. And I don't think that's unreasonable. <laughs> I mean, is it me? Am I being a dick? Is that just what we do now? He's so mad. Terrence, I am. I'm so mad. Because so this is not an acceptable fucking way to do in society. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, speaking of not acceptable things in society, last one for tonight, and we got video. Oh, boy. It's not about poop. No, it's not poop. Everybody sent me this story. Everybody's. Take I'll, a look I'll, at I'll this, guys. Again. I'll do it again. Here we go. There's a this this took place in China. Kid gets into an elevator there. And he's on the control. He's like, ah, now people have to touch my pee pee. Ha ha ha. And however, you know what electronics don't like. <laughs> Liquids. <laughs> so here he is, trapped in the goddamn elephant. You know, I sang that on this show once, and someone yelled at me for getting the melody wrong. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. What are you? Oh. Um, China is using a surveillance video of a child urinating in an elevator. Remind parents they should exercise better control over their children. Sunday, the Ministry of Public Security uh, posted video of footage of a young boy peeing on the control buttons in an elevator in southwest uh, 
Chong Wing. Um, please educate and take good care of your children, it warned in a message. Um, surveillance footage showed a young boy urinating onto the buttons panel while alone in an elevator last Friday. Uh, I gotta wait for a second for the uh, internet to Comcast. It's being Comcastic. We Let's see which one is fucked up. Do do do. Are we fucked up? Well, we're coming back. We're coming back. There we go. I think we're back now. Are we back? Because I have something to and say. We're back. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> men, boys. I know you're really, really, really into your dicks. I know. Like, you love them. You think they're the best shit ever. What was it you said? You think you ejaculate personality. I didn't think that. There's an idiot on fucking Twitter who thinks that. You are fascinated with the fact that this thing between your legs shoots pee. <laughs> and you think it's a fucking water gun. And you like to write your name on shit. And leave droplets on the toilet. Nobody is amused by that but you. Is the thing you need to understand. The rest of the world thinks you're fucking disgusting. Every other man in the world is like, yeah, I have one of those too, and mine is better because every man's obsessed with his own dick. And every woman in the world is like, you're a disgust disgusting pig monster. No one's ever going to touch it now. Well, so before we go writing your name on a wall, peeing on the elevator, whatever the fuck you're going to do. Well, okay. All right. I'll be a say to yourself in your head. Will this make me a disgusting pig monster? <laughs> and nobody will want to touch this penis ever again? I, I, will, don't do I will point out, this is a kid. And I don't kids, care. kids are awful. By the time you're out of diapers, you should know where you're supposed to pee and where you're not. <laughs> this is basic. I, I'll just, uh, the they won't take you in kindergarten if you're still peeing your pants. After he relieves himself, the boy zips up his pants, prepares to get off at the next floor, but then the elevator breaks down. The panicked boy starts hitting multiple buttons, which are covered in his urine. You deserve that. Before the lights abruptly shut down, plunging him into complete darkness. According to local media, the boy was not hurt, was rescued after the elevator short-circuited. Several users said the child got what he deserved, suggested parents should pay for the elevator repairs. I did. He is lucky he was not electrocuted. Okay. See, that's it. <clears throat> I'm not a violent person, and I'm not somebody who generally wishes harm on people, but that would be a good lesson. <laughs> Just burn all your fucking pubic hair off. <laughs> Teach you something. See, that's the thing. Here's a little basic on electricity here. Um, water is electrical conductor, um, urine and blood more so because they have salts that transfer ions and stuff and, um, and metals. Yeah. So when you pee on, on something electrical, you are completing a circuit with your liquids and what the liquids are coming out of, which in this case would be your dick. Yeah. You are so lucky. He, the, the kid is so lucky he did not just fucking fry his entire junk off. Because I was I was watching, I, I was uh, on, I think, Boing Boing the other day, and they showed... He deserved that gruesome fate for not being taught to fear and respect that elevator. The, I, I, I was on Boing Boing the other day, and it showed um, when you get hit by lightning and survive, the scars are like this lightning pattern. All yeah, over you. Cool as fuck. I mean, that's got to be a horrible thing to go through, but at least you get a really fucking cool scar. Can 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 you? Yeah, you, your well, your dick would just be a lightning scar. You yeah. Then then you'd just love it more because you'd be like, oh look, my dick is Harry Potter. I was gonna say Harry Potter. I'm the chosen one. Oh. <sighs> It's just a dick. It looks like a naked mole rat with no feet. Kids are... Kids are the worst. 
that's the thing. And you know, he thought, you know what? This kid thought, I'm the first person to ever do this. <laughs> or I am so cool. Every kid who does this thing. Urine is also a biohazard, you little yeah. fucking bioterrorist. Every kid who does something like this thinks they, they're the ones who invented it. Mm. I mean, I'm sure your nephew came up to you doing some sort of weird trick and acting like he invented it. Look at this thing I invented, Aunt Tara. I don't know. I mean, thank God he never showed off peeing on anything. No. He didn't have great aim, but he didn't do it on purpose. One of my little cousins was going, look what I invented. Yeah. Look what I can do. No, no. What I invented. Like, <laughs> I invented this. Oh, run away. Like, oh, you did. That's this unique shit you just did right there. Yeah. Nobody's ever clicked their tongue in the history of the world. Uh, so I guess, yeah, the first thing we've learned don't pee on the elevator buttons. Don't pee on anything that you're not supposed to pee on. Just keep all of your fucking waste product to your goddamn self. Nobody so, wants it. She's so mad. <laughs> Dude, you're so mad. I am so mad. You know what would a better, better prank? Just put googly eyes on all the pick the buttons. That, that would have been funny. That would have been funny. That would have, you know, you put googly eyes on anything, it's fucking funny. That would have been funny and also not a disgusting biohazard. Yes, there's that too. Put googly eyes on it. Don't piss on sh. Don't throw your shit at people either. I mean, Christ's sake. No, don't do that. In case you haven't noticed, we've evolved. We walk upright, we wear clothes, we drive cars, we go to soul-sucking, awful jobs. We lights off of each other. Yeah, we don't throw our shit anymore. That's passe. Not a fucking thing. That's, that, that is, that, we've, that, that's, that's not in, that, we don't do that. And you're not bringing it back. It's not like disco, okay? Yeah. I think part of the reason it does make me so fucking angry is because I worked retail. Because this shit happens to you working retail. Oh, especially having the bath, fucking bathroom. Right. Goddamn savages. Or I've, I've worked the fitting room where people just leave their fucking dirty diaper there. Like... Um, we've learned that, you know what, if you think you're on the wrong plane, the, the answer is not immobilizing the fucking plane. No. Are like, we... I'm sorry you're having a bad day. You don't need to give it to everybody else. With how many times... You don't time... need to pay that forward. With how many times we hear about these slides, they're going to have to fucking start locking these things somehow. Yeah. Because every time that happens, that costs the airline a lot of fucking money. Those things aren't cheap. I mean, cry me a fucking river for the airline having to pay money. Well, no, because if the airline has to they pay, pay money, thousand dollars to fly fifty miles, we have to pay the money. If the airline, they they pass the savings on to no one. Yeah. Um, we've learned that uh, the proper tool for getting skunks out of your living area is not a fucking smoke bomb. The proper tool for pest control is never a combustible. No. Ever. No. It's never fire. No, because fire... You notice in the Orkin commercials, the Orkin guy never shows up looking like the fucking Terminator? <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> I was just disagreeing with you. Fire is always an option. Always. I'm not bailing you out of jail. <laughs> if you burn something down trying to kill a skunk. Or our little outside bunny. I will leave you sit in jail for the night and think about what you've done. <laughs> think about my choices. Mm -hmm. We've learned that because of a f one fucking rich idiot, Colombia is being overrun by hippos. That's the thing that's happened. I can't say that if I was obscenely wealthy, I wouldn't be that rich idiot. <laughs> 
Like, I feel like I would be like, yes, I have the grounds for it. I want a hippo habitat. Okay, but I think you would be a little more concerned about, you know, doing it the right way than just, I'm rich, I want a couple hippos, I want a zoo, because I'm a crazy person. Yeah. I mean, you know, you want them to be happy. He, he... He did. He did weird. I mean, he had these birds that he had to train them to stay in a tree. He trained them to stay in one particular tree, just so they would look nice. Pablo Escobar was a crazy motherfucker. And finally, we've learned: um, if you want to make your mark on the world, just. You can, in fact, make a career out of getting naked and running around sports events. You can. That is a path. It's... I'm not sure how it pays, but it's a choice. Is there some sort of mentor apprenticeship program for this shit? How does one get into it? I, I feel like that's just an entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> Does one kickstart oneself into a streaker? I mean, you do have to pay for all the tickets. 